Uh, I was hoping to get a drink to calm my nerves, but that's a total fail, so don't mind the shaking legs, and I won't be making any eye contacts. So. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about Gone in 60 Minutes, a uh, practical approach to hacking an enterprise with you. So uh, this talk is going to be about speed hacking your corporation when you are on tight schedule or on a red team engagement, and about a tool, Yesuo, that we wrote to aid um, in this kind of stuff. I am Saurabh Harith. I'm Director of Security Research at Security Compass, and um, my day-to-day -day job is to do pen testing. That's what I do, and nothing else matters. So, I'm Stephen Hall. I work with Sarab at Security Compass as well. Uh, you can see me wearing my Santa hat throughout the year. Uh, other than that, I won't go into much specifics. Right, I mean, I don't look like a guy who would have O days, so, like, just set the record straight. We don't have no <laughs> O days. Won't be dropping any shells here. So, the scenario is that you're on a red team engagement or you actually broke into a corporation. Um, <laughs> And um, so, yeah, the, the one of, the, one of the, the requirements for a red team engagement is that you have to be kind of stealthy and, uh, and quick um, if you want to do your job right. And uh, another assumption is that you've bypassed, revolve, um, you've bypassed physical security. How many of you have revolving doors? I mean, if, you, if the doors are not revolving, it's not secure. What if they always <laughs> You can make them revolve. It's not the right way to do it. Uh, and you have bypassed NAC. So like we have seen some of the clients that um, they implement network access control. Um, talking about NAC is going to be out of scope of this talk. But uh, from my own experience, um, the best thing to do if it's a big company is just look for um, unprotected NAC ports. Um, and like if you see a router hanging from the roof, lying on the ground, that should give you access. Um, so what next? Your goal, obviously, is to get the keys to the kingdom, um, get, uh, get access to maximum data, maximum pwnage, enterprise admin, domain admin, um, mainframe, whatever. And um, so how are you going to go about it? Uh, because running a, a generic vulnerability scanner may not be the best idea because it just lights up all the network security devices uh, like a Christmas tree. So. All right, so the problem is that we, we can't use network uh, vulnerability scanners. We, we have to be stealthy and quick because the security is on our ass. Uh, like, we can't use Google Docs. When you're doing external security assessments, you can't use Google Docs like site, uh, link. That can give you some information. Uh, too bad you're on an internal network. You can't do that. Um, a guy used to work with Rule of Timing from Petava, the guy who wrote Meltigo. He always used to say that it's not about what and it's about where. And I think the gist of the message is that it's not 1980s anymore. Um, uh, no matter how much we moan, security devices are getting better. Uh, like if you look at firewalls, IDS, IPS, they're getting smarter. Um, there's a lot of awareness in the community, so um, you won't find network admins that that can figure um, these devices in a pathetic manner. Like y you actually, so if you're dealing with someone who knows how how to do his job, it it becomes very difficult to get around those things. Um, so, like, the trick is to find that one server, one application that can give you access. And unfortunately, once you do have access, um, it becomes very easy to pivot from system to system and um, escalate your privileges. So, some of the easy ways that you get that shell is Tomcat. Who doesn't love Tomcat? Who also doesn't love JBoss? Because uh, they're both the same. You upload your uh, Ethereum interpreter shell if you want to make that much noise, or uh, lightweight uh, JSP shell. Uh, there's also HUD, uh, Hudson Jenkins, which is a build, man, a build automation tool. So, and they were nice enough to give you an easy way to pop the box. Uh, the two highlighted links are just links you click, and you can run Java, Groovy, uh, typically unauthenticated, so they were nice to know. You didn't even need to upload the shell. They're just like, here, take it. So the first shell, the first window on the top is the Hudson Jenkins. So that is where you, that is the script console that you would just drop your uh, Java Groovy scripting in and go. Uh, sorry, the bottom one is the Ludanium script shell for uh, either JBoss or uh, Tomcat. Uh, 
Uh, Sarab is going to speak about some more uh, horrible fails that might not be known. Every time someone says Hudson Jenkins, I see Paul O'Grady chuckles. <laughs> uh, and also, like, I strongly believe that, like, if you're a pen tester, you would have exploited Tomcat. I think it just installs itself on the network. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, it, it's well known um, that you can pawn it to gain access to the server, and we still find it in tons of numbers. And uh, I'm pretty sure, even it, like, if if it doesn't install itself on the network, it definitely reverts back to the default credentials once you configure it with the proper ones. So, yeah, <laughs> that's just me. Uh, so like these are some of the very popular applications. Like I said, if you're a pen tester, you probably would have exploited any of these applications. But uh, uh, how many of you have exploited AD Manager Plus? Thank God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everyone, yay. Um, so I was, um, I was doing a pen test, and um, actually I hadn't even started doing a pen test. I was in a kickoff meeting with the sales guys and the point of contact on the other side. And they were talking sales stuff, and um, I was already plugged onto the network in the conference room, so I started look, like, scrolling through the network. And um, I was lucky enough to find AD Manager Plus. So it, it's a third party product that, um, that allows you to um, integrate into Active Directory, and then um, I guess they say that they allow easy management of users and, and roles through this product. And if it's configured with default username and password, there you go. It's, it's the fastest ponage ever. And during a kickoff meeting, you become domain admin because you can just add. Um, yourself as a domain admin user, <laughs> user this thing. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't even know what to do for next two weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I had internet access. So <laughs> um, the other big fail I came across was um, a cyber arm. Yeah, fortunately or unfortunately, it's a, it's a security device, um, UTM, Unified Threat Management Device, and. Uh, Again, I was doing an external pen test, and it was one of those pen tests when you get like 10 or 12 IPs from the client, and um, there's nothing running on eight of them. Um, so I didn't have anything to do. I was about to give up, but like, I started looking at, um, at the web front end of um, CyberOM UTM. And so I came across two ODAs that I reported, never heard back from CyberOM, so I just published them. Like, that's what you do, right? You've got to become famous sometime. <laughs> uh, so the first one was that um, this thing had an uh, remote code execution. So like, like it, again, when you install it, it's configured with default username and password. Uh, doesn't prompt you to change it, and um, there's remote code execution there. But the second vulnerability is much more interesting. Um, it, it, this thing also integrates with Active Directory, and there's a, there's a test functionality. So there's a test button. And you can click on it to see if it's connected to Active Directory or not. So, like, um, you know, like, how, um, it's kind of a health check. Um, can anyone think what could go wrong here? You just right-click on the page, and the credentials are there on the client side due to some reason. <laughs> I, I, no one knows, I think. Um, so, the other port that I found open conveniently was the VPN port. So. The, due to the nature of the device, it, it's most likely be configured with a high privileged domain user like a network administrator and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, the, the, since the credentials are client side, you can just grab the credentials off the page um, and then connect to the VPN port domain admin again in the next two hours or so. And again, you can watch, go back to watching movies on Netflix. Right, so, so the, the point I'm trying to make is that um, Hudson Jenkins, Tomcat, these, these may be more uh, popular applications that uh, all of us uh, exploit. Um, so that got me curious, so we started looking at ExploitDB, and if you actually parse through ExploitDB, you'll find that there are over 12,000 unique entries that can allow you to compromise or pwn a server in the similar kind of manner. And that's where we started working on Yesu, so I'll let Steven talk about it now. So, like he says, why did we write this? 12,000 entries on ExploitDB. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast, much less that much ways to get a box. So we wrote this tool in Ruby. Uh, no, we didn't write it on our flight here. We didn't have a flight here. It was a long streetcar ride, so just as bad. Uh, what else? So it is not a vulnerable. It's not an application vulnerability scanner. It's a uh, application that helps you identify vulnerable applications. So that's the big difference. It's not as noisy, it's not, uh, it's not your web, web inspect, uh, it's 
don't burp. It totally different beast altogether. Uh, we support about 100 applications, uh, which we identify by a pretty bad way right now, which is uh, the unique URL that uh, applications generate for themselves. And all of the applications right now are apps that support uh, Metasploit. So Yasuo will give you the Metasploit link that you can just go use Metasploit. And if it is vulnerable to that, it lets you figure out it is there. Like I said, uh, why did we write it? 12,000 entries. It, that just speaks for itself. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said, these 12,000 entries are for remote web apps that are not XSS and CSERF. These are all exploits that are remote code execution, SQL injection, local file inclusion, remote file inclusion, uh, all that fun stuff that gets you the shell. In a world without automation, like so easy a cat can do this now. So what we did, uh, we were on a client site one day and they're like, hey, scope's for about 5,000. We want you to do your due diligence with Nessus. So we did. It took about 24 hours. Everybody knew we were there. And they're like, all right, you've gone and done this now. Now we're just going to give you free reign to do whatever you want across, what, about 60,000 IPs? 65. 65,000. So a slash 16. And they're like, try to be as quiet as you can. I'm like, okay. So we ran your tool. It took about three, two, two hours. And we found 25 applications across, their net, across the 65,000 hosts that we could pop and get admin. And we were done by the end of the day. So Nessus took 24 hours, and we took eight to get domain admin from start to finish. So Nessus took uh, 24 hours for 5,000 IPs. Yeah, so 24, uh, 24 hours was for 5,000. And the two hours were for was for sixty five thousand, so, and currently that's on a single thread because we actually haven't quite figured out how to do multi threading yet. <laughs> so there are things out there. There's Nessus uh, Nessus plugins uh, and map scripts, Nick two, RAR, uh, but what they lack is that they don't help you identify vulnerabilities that you might be able to exploit. So they let you, they help you know that, hey, this is here. Uh, it might have these creds, but what Yasuo does is it's like, this is here, it might have these creds, and if it's vulnerable, you can use this to exploit it. All right, so, I mean, in my opinion, Nessus won't even pick up 20% of these applications. Nessus, in uh, most cases, will tell you that, hey, there's this application on this IP that's put, and it's configured with default credentials. It only picks up very few applications and tells you that these applications are actually vulnerable to remote code execution. So, um, right, so um, these are some of the search options that we provide with Yasuo. And um, dash F takes um, an NMAP, NMAP output file in XML format. So if you don't want your search to perform the port scan, you can do your own port scan and provide the file with the dash F option. Um, dash R accepts an IP range or CIDR range, pretty much the same format that NMAP takes. Um, rest of the options are kind of standard NMAP options, no ping. If, if you're on a filtered network, then uh, you can avoid pinging with dash N. Um, dash P, you can provide all the port numbers. Um, dash uppercase D, uh, it only scans for all the default ports, uh, so on and so forth. Dash B is, um, is interesting because um, through Dash B, you can brute force the applications that Yasuo finds. So in the end, Yasuo will tell you that, hey, I found this application on this port, and this is vulnerable to remote code execution or RFI, LFI. But this application also implements HTTP basic or form-based authentication. So, so if you choose to, using Dash B option, you can either brute force form-based authentication um, or HTTP basic authentication, or all of them. Um, so if you do just dash B all, it'll brute force everything. Uh, so I wanted to write a, a nice program chart for um, for Yesu, like how, this, how the flow works and everything. And I was working um, on my laptop. Uh, I was trying to create a flow chart using those shitty 
PowerPoint boxes. And my wife walked past me and she's like, yeah, that looks like a crappy flowchart. <laughs> and, and I told her, so why don't you make it? And so she came up with this Tetris style flowchart. I'm, I'm sorry if you can't read it, but I did not have the balls to remove it from my slide. Uh, <laughs> 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 we did agree to, I, I, I barely raised my voice and asked her to make another readable version, so I think this is more readable. <laughs> uh, so like I said, if you, if you want your suit to uh, perform port scanning, you can use dash R option to provide IP range or CIDR range. It starts performing uh, the port scan, it saves the output in XML format on the disk and starts parsing that file. If you don't want your suit to perform the port scanning, you can do it on your own and then provide the output in XML format using the dash F, F option. And um, so after that, starts parsing that file, only looks for the open web-based port, so HTTP, HTTPS, HTTP alt, WebSM, so on and so forth. And then it creates a, a very primary URL, so IP address, colon, port. After that, it starts using the unique application signatures from, uh, from default path.csv file. And right now, as uh, Steven mentioned, we support around 115 applications, and all of them have exploits and metasploits. Um, so it's, it, it, it then creates the full request and sends to the server, and um, <clears throat> and based on the response you get, it tells you if the application is there on, um, if the ap application exists on the server or not. Uh, if it does, and if you do choose to brute force, it performs a brute force. We provide a very uh, minimalistic username and password file. Um, if you want, you can provide your own file um, and then um, do heavy brute forcing of those applications. And in the end, it will give you a table which will tell you that this IP, this port has this application installed. These are the default username and passwords or weak username and passwords. And um, yeah. Um, oh, when you download the code, um, you get the main Ruby script, yesu.rb, that responds to 200 RP, RB, uh, Ruby file, which mainly deals with um, like form based brute force um, um, and stuff like that. Default path.csv is the core file. It contains all the default application signatures. Uses .txt path or .txt as the default username password files. It released under GPL version three. Uh, this is what the current uh, uh, default path.csv file looks like, and we are in process of changing it, adding a secondary signature. Um, right now, we've made it really simple. We have got uh, first column has all the unique application signatures. The second column has the unique path. So you. Right now, we support only Metasploit applications, so it'll have all, all the paths, uh, exploit paths from Metasploit. Um, so yeah, we, we plan to implement secondary signature and also a string to match after you, you, you pass the page. Uh, behind the scenes, um, it tries to detect false positives, so you know, before it sends out any requests uh, for enumerating applications, it sends out the bogus request for a file, something like this file will never exist, or txt and this file will never exist directory. And then, you know those servers that send uh, 200, 401 for each and every garbage file you, you request for? So if, if you get 200 back for these files, it just um, discards that particular port and IP and then moves on to the next run. Um, what's new? Yes, we have tried to um, we actually not tried. We have actually impl finally implemented randomization. So we were talking about being stealth, but initially what was happening was that um, it would create an initial URL, so IP address port number, and then start sending, like start reading the default path.csv files. If there are 200 applications in there, it'll send 200 requests to that particular IP and port, uh, which is not really being stealth. Um, so now it randomizes all the IPs and ports, so it doesn't uh, target one IP, one port at the same time. It just randomizes the stuff. Uh, more robust check for, uh, to detect false positive. Uh, initially, we were only checking for a file name. Now we also check for file and directory name. Uh, the, the output table was pretty shitty, but thanks to Steven, we now have a pretty output table. <laughs> uh, obviously, more application signatures. So I think we recently added um, ap application signatures for IP cameras. Um, so that's the thing. Like You can add your own signatures. If you do some recon beforehand, uh, like if you look at the wiki page of that particular company, you find out what technology they're using, you can just wipe out all the application signatures from in there and just put your own signatures in there and then try to find those applications. So the code is generic. Um, code is modular now thanks to RAM. Yeah, me and Steven messed up the code really bad. Uh, so RAM fixed that. All right, demo time. 
Um, so the, for, the, for the purpose of this demo, I've already done um, an Nmap scan, save the output file. Can you see? Better? I can barely see that when I'm here. Wait. All right, so this is what it looks like initially. Dash. So right now I'm not trying to brute force anything. Just, and in the end you get the table because it, it's blown up, the table is a bit broken, but you will see that the first column is the, the application path and the second column is the exploit path. Uh, the third and fourth columns are the default or weak username and passwords and um, um, they're not there because we did not brute force it. So it's a four column table. And um, I'm just trying to brute force everything, be it HTTP form, uh, basic or form based authentication. So the green, the green lines that you can't see are good things. It means it's found something, either an application or credentials. Uh, also, like Sir Rob said, it, the, the default file is pretty, mu is pretty simple, so if you want to use it to find the wiki as well, you can do that. Uh, something I do is I have different default files and that I use for different purposes. So I have one that looks for uh, wikis uh, chef, puppet, stuff like that. And then I have one that either will look for just JBoss, Tomcat, uh, because I've noticed sometimes that uh, Nessus will find like the JMX invoker, but it won't check for default creds on the invoker. So if the invoker exists, but has like admin admin, Nessus won't report it. So it gives you that kind of flexibility to go through things a bit quicker. Right, so like it passed the applications and then as it passes the application because we chose to brute force, it starts brute forcing those particular <coughs> applications. Um, again, we got a table now, application, exploit path, the second column, and then we got Tomcat, Tomcat, of course, because it's gotta be there um, because we all know it reverts back to the default credentials. Um, and then there are like four more applications on different IPs and then the exploit path from Metasploit. So we, we don't support exploitation at this point of time and we probably won't because there are thousands of exploits and exploit DB and I don't necessarily trust all of them, um, rightly so. All right, um, some of the challenges that we had that um, parsing, um, like initially when I started writing this thing, um, we thought that it's going to be super easy but it's not easy to, to get application unique signatures. You, you have to install uh, applications and, and get the application paths. Um, we do, uh, we do dynamic extraction of user, um, login forms, username and password fields uh, when brute forcing HTTP basic authentication. And uh, so if your page is in French, it's going to bum out, it's not going to work. So we try to do all the pen testing work in, uh, in North America and try to avoid going to the UK or stuff. Uh, future development. Uh, we plan to implement smarter version detection. Um, support for more vulnerable applications and that's um, Actually, I'll come back to that. Um, support a sign secondary signature, add multi-threading. Um, I'm not sure if we will be able to, able to support vFeed. It's a vulnerability aggregator. Um, it's pretty awesome. And uh, of course, we are working on changing the format of default path.csv file so that it's not 1980s style. Um, we can definitely use signatures. So, um, if you happen to come across applications, um, I mean, drop us a line, a, a tweet, like post it on, um, on GitHub, contribute to default path.csv on GitHub, send a pigeon, it doesn't really matter. Um, as soon as we have, um, uh, we have signatures, it becomes more popular with each and every signature you put in. Um, I suppose we don't have time for questions, so I'll be smoking outside and you can catch me. Steven will be here with Santa hat, easy to spot. Um, you can download the source code from here and um, we can shoot, uh, connect with us on um, Twitter or send us an email. All abuse email goes to Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>